Hello? The word fell dead as it left her lips. No light, no light. And so, no time, no time, no place. The blackness so profound and complete she could not see her eyelids flicker. Maybe this is nowhere. Panic flashed through her. She waited. But I must be here. I can smell. I can touch. I can taste. I can be. So where? Where am I now? Sniffing the warm air. Feeling her feet touching with her hands. Earth, soil, sand, stones. But how will I live? How will I eat? Who will I talk to? Please, someone. Hello? Tears trickled down her cheeks, landing soundless on the earthen floor. Darkness complete, but closing eyes. There was light, opened eyes. There was dark, closed eyes, light. Amazing light, many colored tapestries of sharp, bright, moving and rotating shapes and objects, geometric patterns, replacing patterns, expanding and contracting, bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller. But how can it be to see without looking at things, things sweeping shapes, thick and thin, breathing, breathing, moving, pulsating, hands reaching out to try and touch the glowing shapes that are real, real things that feel the same as the shapes in the unseeing sight, strange to the touch with a buzz and a sigh, I can see without my eyes. Roots. What? Who's that? Roots. Who's there? Those are what you call roots. Who said that? My roots. Oods. Oods is such a satisfying sound. One part of the three sounds that made up the first sound that was ever sounded when all was silent and dark and all was new before. Newness was new before the universe hatched like an egg, spoken into existence with a sound of which one part was Ooh. Do you want to know the other two? Who are you? Who are you? I, I don't know who I am. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Please tell me, where am I? Why am I here? So many questions. What can you see? I, I can see shapes like giant arms and legs with no feet. But what can you see with your heart and with your tummy? And with, with the part of you that is somewhere else. Which part? <laughs> Why are you making fun of me? Fun is good. This is not fun. Why not? Because, because I don't know where I am. Yes, you do. You will come to your senses and remember. Now you must wait, for help is coming. But what will I do? Do with what? With this? What's this? This emptiness. Well, what can you do with a thing that is full? Empty it? Yes. And what can you do with a thing that is empty? Fill it. So you have emptiness waiting to fill. And what could be better than that? Yes, I suppose so. What, what's your name? Hello? Hello, where are you? Come back. Please, don't leave me. Then a breathing, not far away, in the open-eyed blackness. Breathing, wheezing, wheezing, closer, closer and closer, eyes wide open, closer and closer, eyes open wide, so close the breath could be felt, touched, tasted, soft grass and leaves, heat, sun, rain, get back, eyes snapped, closed and light, vision, sight, glowing, yellows, greens and deepest reds and purple, orange, nose to nose with a giant stag, with great horned antlers, lowered down, 
stillness, eye to eye, and a look of kindness in those eyes. And all the fear was swept away. You come with me. You come with me. The stag knelt down, and with one bound, the stag and rider up through the ground into the night, up into the air and the star-filled sky, up, up, up into the air, looking back to see a gargantuan oak tree, arms reaching up to the star-filled night. I will see you again soon. I know that tree. I know that tree. Yes, you know that tree. A young friend, that tree knows thee. Up, up, up over the moon, then flashing back down at the speed of sound, over the whispering forest, flashing past a, a young girl and a boy, angrily tossing a piece of paper into the forest floor, and as a solitary cloud began to the rain upon them, up, up, up over the moon, then flashing back down at the speed of sound over the whispering forest, flashing past a young girl and boy, angrily tossing a piece of paper onto the forest floor as a solitary cloud began to rain upon them. And then up, up, up and away, downward and onward to a place deep, deep, deep in the valley where a very old woman in a nut-brown cloak with a chestnut trug and long striped stockings was collecting mushrooms there by the stream bank. Slowly, slowly, slowly the stag and the girl landed, gently stopped and stood and patiently waited and the woman looked up with eyes like a lantern and a smile that spoke a special something, comfort and kindness like a warm, warm fire, and an old kettle whistling and her long red beard plaited neatly together with a fine red bead as a small decoration, smiled a smile that brought back a memory of the woodland children lost in the rain cloud. Ah, my dear fortune, for that is your name. Fear not, my darling, there is not long to wait now, for Atom and Luna are trying to help you, and help you they will, if I am not mistaken, for indeed, as above, so below, and children are wiser, my brave oak daughter, yes, children are wiser than many folk.